In this video, I'm gonna teach you the secret technique that every single pro in the world is using to get fatter, bigger, and better sounding drums. If you don't know me, my name is Tyson. I am the author of The Objective Mix, and also I've been mixing and mastering for 13 years, everything from MIDI drums to live drums to everything in between. So I wanna share one of the fundamental techniques that every pro is using to get professional sounding, awesome, bombastic drums. So what is the secret to bigger, fatter drums? The secret is using samples. Regardless if you're, if you're using MIDI or if you're using real drums, samples can do immense good in being able to create either more original sounding drums for yourself that nobody else has, or being able to just normalize your drums a little bit and add a little bit more of that professional flair to drums that maybe aren't the best recorded. Now let's dive into the five easy steps to be able to add samples to your drums inside of Logic Pro X, or I think we're on 11 now, but it doesn't matter. Let's dive into Logic Pro and show you how to do this. So the first step to getting bigger, fatter drums is being able to actually duplicate these tracks with samples. So Logic makes this super easy, and all we need to do is hit Control D after we've selected a track. But if you don't want to remember that, or you have a hard time remembering those uh, shortcuts there, if you go up to Track after we've selected our track, and then go to Replace or Double Drum Track, that is where we're going to go here. So Track, uh, double replace or double drum track. Uh, this is the shortcut you'll see, control D. So hit that and it'll analyze your transients and then it'll give us a brand new uh, instrument track there. So we wanna select kick because we're du we're duplicating our kick and I want to do mode, which is doubling, not necessarily replacement because that's gonna replace the old track. We don't want that. We wanna create a new track that's going to add character to our existing kick because we don't hate it. It's just lacking some power. So let's dive in here and see what this is actually doing. It's really just creating an additional MIDI track on top of the already existing track that I have here. So what we can do is if we, especially if we have live drums, we want to go through and adjust this threshold to make sure that we're only capturing the actual drum hits. So because I can go up to like zero, for example, and you'll see all of my MIDI notes just disappeared and there's no actual sample being produced. So I want to, want to move it down enough that I'm actually capturing every single note, but not anything that is else in the track. For example, if there's a, if you can hear your snare, right, you don't want a kick to be triggered off of your snare because it's a little bit too loud, for example. So if you have a real drum kit, I would highly recommend going through and actually just spot checking everything after this step to make sure that we didn't capture any, you know, random tom hits or, uh, snare hits that were a little bit too loud and we produced a sample where there shouldn't actually be one. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So now we have our track here. And if you're struggling to get that industry standard quality for your mixes, then go ahead and check out my book, The Objective Mix. It teaches you the objective standards of how to get an industry standard quality mix. There's a link in the description if you are interested in that. Let's get back to the video. And the next step, step number two, is going to be selecting our sample. So as we can tell here, we can just play a little bit of this song. So we have that sample in there. And here's the original. So you can tell the original, it's not like a terrible kick, but this is definitely lacking a little bit. So we're gonna be definitely be adding the sample here. It automatically has a, a sampler input added here. So we can go through and just flip through all of these different options. So you go to bass kick, acoustic kicks, all of these, there's layer kicks, there's electronic kicks, whatever you're looking for, there's something here for you. Just stock inside of logic. So no need to like buy sample packs or anything like that. So what I like to do is I just like to start at the top and I just start flipping through these right here because it'll automatically go to the next one makes it real easy to just flip through these. What I am listening for is I'm going to identify what I don't like about my kick first and what character I would like to add to it. There's essentially a few types of kicks that you'll run into. There are kicks that have a very heavy transient, meaning that they're very punchy and they sound very even top end heavy sometimes. So that's going to be more of like the beater head, if you will. If you want that more of that character inside of your track, then there's definitely uh, layers or even kicks that are going to emphasize that further and give you a little bit better of a kick. The other side of it is a lot of kicks that emphasize the low end or the body of the kick. And so they, they're not as punchy, but they sound really full and beefy, right? So this first kick w falls under that category. So yeah, there's some transient there. There's some of that punch that we're hearing, but the majority of it is really just that body, like the thump, 
really that we're we're feeling from that kick so for this song in general i'm going for more of like a hardcore uh, a little bit more of an aggressive kick sound so i'm gonna pick something that's a little bit more top end heavy something has a little bit more punch something has a little bit more uh just grit to it if you will so let's add in our our original kick here and then we'll start flipping through and we'll decide where we want to go with this So I don't hate sample number three. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. I don't hate this one. I think this one could be mixed in really well. I'm going to go back to three because I like that one. Eh, maybe six again. No. Yeah, I think nine takes the cake. Uh, that's the best option to hear. Let's just double check, make sure it sounds good in context. It's a little loud. Yeah, you know what? On second thought, it doesn't really have enough beef to it. So let's go back. Let's try a different one. Yeah, you know, I think the, the original kick actually did have a lot more transient enough that it makes this sound good. I'm not a huge fan of the original kick, to be honest. I might actually just replace that entirely with a different sample. But for now, let's leave this. It sounds pretty decent. Let's work with that. So the next step is very critical. So step number three is if you want to, and if your track calls for it, you should normalize the track. So in this case, you, we have a couple quiet notes over here. And I don't know how those got in there. Cut those out. Uh, so yeah, I should have spot checked this one. Even though these are MIDI drums, still ended up with some stuff in there. All right, that sounds good. So I'm gonna just raise these samples up. I, I generally don't go all the way. Uh, I think around 80 generally has the best tone in general, right? I'm okay if there's a little bit di of dynamics. If you don't want any dynamics in here at all, you can go ahead and uh, just normalize the, the velocity of all of these. And I don't know why that's... So you change the display here to note velocity and then it'll show you all those velocities. If you want to normalize those, you can just drag all the way across and it will normalize all of them to whatever you set that as and then drag them back to a more appropriate level. I'm not going to do that because I want a little bit more life into this kit overall and this kick. So this is going to allow me to have even more dynamics in there, which will make it sound a little bit more real, which is really what I'm going for with this kit overall because it's from a midi drum kit so it's going to sound unnatural because there's not any natural variation of the notes this is going to add actually a little bit of more variation because these notes are varied as you can see so after that let's go ahead and bounce that uh i'm going to make sure that it's not too loud so i generally turn this down a little bit and now step number four is to just bounce all of this stuff out you can hit Control b that will bounce it in place or you can just select the region and it'll have that bounce in place option there and so i'm gonna say uh kick sample and i just want to mute the original one in case i need to go back to it for any reason if i made a mistake i can all right so that's looking pretty good i'm gonna go ahead and hit h to hide that so we're not using it at all and it's muted, right? So it's not making any impact to our mix. So now I can take this track and mix it in to taste. Yeah, so now I have a far heavier sounding, sounding kick. So listen to this. But we're not done yet. You might think, oh, that's great. Now I'm done. But no, we have one more step to take care of. And that is checking the phase and polarity. So this is step number five in the process is check the phase and polarity of this kick. And I kind of thought that this was happening. So it sounded a little weak. And that is because we have an issue here. As you can see, this wave goes down and then up and then down. And this one goes up and then down and then up. So they're exact opposite. This is going to cause what we refer to as cancellation or phase cancellation. 
and they're going to sound terrible together because there's no bottom end. So let's go ahead and filter that. I'm also going to move. It's a little bit out of line. So you can see this one crosses that barrier from bottom to up right here. So I'm going to move this one a little bit ahead so that this first major peak right is about the same on both of them. And then that's going to line up really, really well, except for the fact, uh, mute these. You can tell it sounds a little bit weak. So what our solution is, is going into this utility plugin. We can pull up that gain plugin here and reverse that phase. So here's before, here's after. You can tell how much more full, how much more meaty that is when we reverse, we've, we've reversed this. This is a normal process for live drums. If you have live drums, right, your kick in and your kick out need to be phase aligned. But people seem to forget that you need to do this with samples. So make sure you don't forget that because that is going to ruin your drums and not make them bigger and more bombastic. And that's just really unfortunate when somebody forgets to do that and it ruins their whole take. So don't forget that. And now our drums sound way cooler. So here is the before and after of just our kick. So if you're trying to mix drums and you want to learn these six steps to mixing your drum, then make sure you check out the next video because that's going to teach you how to do that. All right, I'll see you there.